sitting over your left hand shoulder is on your, on the the back of your wall just there yeah. is um it's kind of like it's a disc right or a, a gold vinyl is that yeah it's that like a gold t- vinyl yeah it's a gold vinyl so you just dropped a pretty crazy statement there you said you were making a quarter of a million a month mm-hmm. in profit from your e-commerce brand whilst you're doing the the fish tank company that yeah. is uh that's like an like an utterly insane number yeah. there are enterprise fashion brands that don't make that much profit they're they're you know these with with hundreds of employees i worked it out the euros were on at the time and i was making more than gareth southgate <laughs> <laughs> so I like, Fuck yeah. oh. like, the third day i was like yeah this is good okay right tell us unpack this then because this is crazy so that's a crazy wild number a quarter of yeah. a million per month and tell us a little bit about what what was happening like where what were you doing and you know if we're talking about contrast right like the contrast from running a fish tank kind of aquarium bit luxury aquarium business where you're having to run out do maintenance and inst- installations versus what were you doing to make a quarter of a million a month in profit yeah. So I was selling an online digital product that had zero product cost that I had found through someone else on Etsy. It took me probably an hour and a half to set up. And by the first day, it would generate me 500 a day in profit. And then I just scaled it. So this is what I mean. It's literally a fucking game. Like people take it too seriously. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to spend four hours building this website out and do this, do that. No, just test everything and anything. Go through as many failures as you possibly can. It's a numbers game, right? It's like the same when you go to a nightclub. You go and speak to a girl. First girl says, fuck off, I've got a boyfriend. It's like, all right, cool, next one. No, I'm not interested in you. You're, you know, in your case, you're too small. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, in, in, you know, I'm not interested. And you go to the next one, the next one, the next one. It's like, eventually you're going to find a girl that is interested in you. And it's the same with business. You try as many things as possible. You don't give up and you're going to land on something and you're going to crack it. So that's exactly what happened here. It was kind of like two years of like quietness, wasn't really making a ton of money, uh, had a couple of had a couple of wins, but they went to paying rent and, you know, that kind of thing. So I then landed on Etsy as a platform and I was like, holy shit, this is such a good way to get product research done because these guys are making money already. But most of the time, they're elderly people, maybe like in their 50s or 40s that have set up these craft stores that are then selling them on the side. But there's like a small niche of these different services that are super weird. I don't really want to go into too much detail in terms of what the product was because we're still selling it. But it's uh, it was a digital service that they were only selling on Etsy. And I saw all these people talking about it on TikTok. They were getting super excited. It was kind of like a viral trend at the time. So all I did was I just took what they were selling. I made it on my own website on a ClickFunnels, which again, I had tons of experience in because that's what I was building products on prior to that. And then I started running Facebook ads and Instagram ads to that click funnel. And again, I had learned that over the last two or three years. And I think that's also key, like knowing that I had all this experience from all those failures. Like that's why it's so important, right? If I hadn't had them, I would have no clue how to run these Facebook and Instagram ads. So then, yeah, we started pumping uh, funds in. I'd wake up in the morning, 7 a.m. And there'll be 10 grand in, uh, in, in, the, in the bag, you know? So I'm like, fuck, all right, this is a cheat code and uh, I've got to ride it as long as I can. But then I'd wake up, put the uh, aquarium maintenance kit on and go out and make no money in the real world. But (laughs) what was funny is I'd go and speak to these clients and they'd be like talking like shit to me. And I'm just like, bro, I'm making fucking quarter of a mil a month. Go fuck yourself. Like uh, (laughs) if they were shit clients, I'd just be like, fuck off. Like I'm not interested. You're done. You know, so it, it felt good having that power. And you didn't really care about whether your real business was making money because this like internet business that was so low cost, so profitable was running in the background. Yeah. You just like lose all perception of what's normal. So uh, can we talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of that? So you're running ads and because if we're, when we talk about those numbers, yeah, those, uh, I mean, what, what levels, are, how much were you, how much were you putting in on ad spend? Uh, like, per day when you're absolutely maxing out yeah i'd say so over like eight months we spent one point one point two million pound in facebook and instagram ads which is obviously a huge amount of money um yeah. but then that brought us i think it was close to 2.6 million in revenue and like i said the product cost was zero um i had a team in the philippines 
again, because I'd read Tim Ferriss's uh, four hour work week and understood that outsourcing was the way to go. Um, I had team in the Philippines. I had two people, actually three people. It was a girl that girl, her brother and her sister working together. I was paying them like 50 K a year each. So for like eight months, they were on like making a bag. They ended up buying like a pharmacy. They paid for their dad to get like a kidney transplant. It was epic. It was so, so good. And like, they were running everything. They were doing everything. I set up systems in place like Zapier to port all information over to then feed into the VAs. They would then deliver and there'll be like automated customer service emails and that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I mean, that was literally it. It's as simple as that. It was an email deliverable product. And yeah, um, I just put systems in place to, that meant that I didn't have to do the fucking work, which right. I think a so, lot of people mess up on. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, that's something that we think about at the moment uh, quite a lot. So uh, like Hormozy talks about this being like, okay, well, if you're, when you're scaling, the you've got to ask yourself uh, like a question, like if, if, if you have something that you want to delegate, the yeah. question process should be, can I, can I automate this process? Um, if the answer is like, kind of no then it's like do i need to then hire someone to be able to do this mm. and it's like can like it now it's like can ai do this can yeah. i can ai do it yes or no can i automate it yes or no with ai and if there's not if if those two are like are like no that's the only time you're like okay well now i can i should consider an exp adding the expense of hiring someone yeah the reason i'm sat here is because i read the four hour work week uh in 2010 when i was at university and I'm like, and I, this is why I've got such a contrasting story to you in that I did seven years of fucking university and I don't do shit mm. like with any of the information that I learned in those seven years. But I learned, I read the four hour work week in my, I think, fourth year of seven. So four, four out of seven years. And it was like a penny drop moment. I was like, immediately I knew I was like, I'm not going to be uh, like, I'm not going to work as a medical practitioner. I'm not going to just sit there, just fiddling around with people in people's mouths all day i want to be an entrepreneur but it's now taken me it's 13 years now 13 years before i finally feel like i'm in a position where i've got the skills and the experience to actually put every pull everything together and yeah do do something when did you read that book i read that book a month before i started dropshipping I think that was like my really? entrance point into it was the first book I'd ever read as well. I didn't ever read before that. I was It's one of reading. my yeah, it's it's super super funny because it is a book that uh again, again we've mentioned Alex Formosi. He he also is the same. He like says that that is that book he read it again like you yeah. know years ago and that was the thing that was like okay instead of I'm um, instead of me being an employee, I want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's incredible that the book really like stands the test of time because it was before Instagram, it was before Facebook, it was yeah, written yeah. in a time that where that where we didn't have Shopify, we didn't have all these platforms. But it's kind of weird how all of the people that we're you know we you know uh, work with and our peers all seemingly were directed by that book, and yeah. it's, I just find it kind of super interesting. Yeah, I feel like you you can tell an entrepreneur that's been in it for a while just by the way they sort of manage their work workflow and workload right if someone's like all right we can we can automate this we can do this we can use this tool for that we can hire in vas to do this it's like oh shit this guy's this guy's a veteran he knows his shit you know he's read a couple <laughs> of books it's, it's, it's the newbies that are like oh yeah i just sit there grinding 15 hours a day making yeah. money like or trying to make money yeah it's like yeah keep going you got a couple of years left until you uh you, you really crack it you got a lot more failures ahead of you but um yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's just it's just a mindset right and this this whole yeah online business thing is a mindset it's ridiculous when you think about it we're sat here we're typing a, fuck, a, a couple of uh, sequences of keys few mouse clicks and that generates us millions in dollars depending on which ones we press in what order right yeah so yeah, yeah. It, it's so it's crazy nuts. it's nuts <laughs> yeah and um, it's when you put it like that yeah and you know i think personally you know you said it took you a long time because you went to university but going back to this product that was making all this money each month the money was great. My lifestyle didn't change too much because, well, I was buying the shoes that I wanted. I was buying the clothes that I wanted. I bought a nice car. Uh, I bought a house, but it's like, that was it. I didn't, I didn't go to like, I don't know, helicopter rides, I, I, you know, whatever rich, crazy rich people do. I'm just not interested in it. I'm not going to be like, all right, cool. I'm only going to be drinking sparkling water that costs 50 pound a bottle from now on. It's like, no, I'll drink fucking tap water. 
I'm from like yeah. a great, uh, <laughs> my, my background is not that, you know, I'm fucking very uh, brought up understanding that you got to work for your money. And I think that's what people don't realize. People are always so just excited to get to that point of making the money and having that money, but nothing really changes. And the best part about making that money is the process of making that money. That's what's really rewarding. Like just making the money itself, like it got too easy at, at some point. So yeah. I'll be like, oh, yeah, great. Like money coming in, it's boring as fuck though. And I'm not really enjoying it. And it's like, you got to slap yourself. I'd say that to my girlfriend. She'd be like, what the fuck are you on about? Like I'm working my ass off over here making, you know, 5% of what you're doing. And I'm like, not even that, like a 1% of that. And I'm like, yeah, fair play. You know, you got to get a snap out of snap back into reality almost. And uh, it's, it's um, yeah, it's a weird one.